Next question. Jocko, just checked out Podcast 21 with Tim Kennedy. Awesome. Raised a big time question, though. You and Tim agreed that cops who make controversial decisions slash mistakes do so simply because they're not trained well enough. That begs the question, how much does the environment someone trains in impact their decision making? How much tactical decision making is innate versus learned? Could killing the ideology that <coughs> that the insurgents buy into be better than killing insurgents? Or can they simply not be reasoned with at any level? There have been terrorists who flee their organizations and start new, peaceful lives in other locations. Okay, uh, yes. So to the first part of the question, yes, you train how you fight. And the more you train, the more you reprogram your instincts. So that's important. Mm-hmm. You're reprogramming your instincts when you train and you get better instincts. So that's what you do. And and now when cops make mistakes, oftentimes it's because of their lack of training. Sometimes they make a mistake that is a mistake that got made. You know, it's it's a mistake. That's all it is. And they've been trained well and they still make a mistake. I'm going to tell you the percentage of mistakes go down dramatically the more that you train and the more realistically trained and the more often you train, you're going to get better. No doubt about it. But that's like an instinct. You're training your instinct. So that's one thing. This This idea that we could just attack an ideology of terrorists and then have some of them convert. That'd be a wonderful thing that you attack the ideology and then some of them become peaceful, productive members of society. And if we did like a full court press to try and make this happen, we might be able to convert, let's say we were really successful, we might be able to convert five or 10% a year. Okay, so that's great. Then you have to remember that the enemy is also out there converting people, right? Probably at, at least equal rate, maybe even a little bit higher. So we still end up losing the fight because mm-hmm. to break even is to lose because mm-hmm. they're still out there doing what they do. The, now, um, and in the meantime, by the way, they're still gaining territory or causing terror. Mm-hmm. So it's not a good situation. Now, the examples that I use all the time obviously are Nazi Germany and Imperial Japan. Both of those groups were, like the current day jihadists, they were looking to take over the world. And if we just tried to kill their ideas with our ideas, we would be speaking German right now. Because we would not, we couldn't have changed their ideas fast enough. And and by the way, they were playing a different game. If we were playing the game of let's cha- exchange ideas, The enemy is playing a different game. So, for instance, if someone is trying to assault you Mm. and you're a pacifist, and so you decide that you're going to try and convince them of the virtues of nonviolence through through debate and the Socratic method and critical analysis and the use of various rhetorical devices, and that's what you're going to do, and you might be the best debater in the entire world. But none of those things are going to stop that assaulter from punching you in the face. He's playing a different game. And once you're on the ground, he's going to start kicking you. He's a violent person. Now, maybe if you were to be able to slow him down long enough to try and reason with him, he's not playing that game, though. Mm. He's there to attack you. He's there to stab you. So your ideas aren't going to defeat his ideas. You don't have the opportunity to do that. He's not playing debate. So you have to know how to fight. You have to understand violence and you have to be prepared to use it. And if you can, if you can debate and you can win, that's awesome. That's awesome. But if it doesn't work, you need to be prepared to use violence as it's needed. And that's the same thing on a larger scale, obviously. We, we can do everything we can to try and help snuff out this extremist ideology. Let's prop up reformists as much as we can. Let's try and bring economic opportunities to these impoverished and and deprived regions so that they're less likely to come under the psychological grips of a death cult. But at the same time that we're doing those procedures, let's attack their strongest factories of hate. 
let's go after their centers of gravity and let's snuff out and destroy those individuals that clearly have no hope of reform and exist only to spread this cancer of hate and violence and terror and death and if we attack on both those fronts hopefully one day where we can live in a world where we can solve problems not with physical force but with our intellectual power and that would be great and unfortunately I don't think that day will ever come because there's always going to be someone out there that's going to attack you regardless of your debating skills yeah man